people. Bill was frightened for his life back in those days and he needed some way to get the information out to a large number of people and keep in mind this was in the days long before the internet so there was no real uh, practical very easy way for people to do this kind of dis disseminating their information or, or documents that they had it was very difficult back in those days and the only way would have been through probably the printed word would have been the easiest way. So that's what Bill had done. He had made many, many copies of this secret government. The secret government was an amalgamation of Bill's continued research into UFO phenomena and was first introduced at the MUFON Symposium on July 2nd, 1989 in Las Vegas, Nevada. The document highlighted his research into the UFO crash in the late 40s in Roswell, New Mexico and documents that alluded to President Truman's knowledge of extraterrestrial life and his administration's efforts to keep it quiet. Cooper had seen these documents while serving in naval intelligence. But eventually, when they began to have confidence in me, uh, I began to see things coming across my desk that were just absolutely incredible. And, and a lot of it is, is really hard to talk about because it's so far uh, outside the normal concept of reality for the average American that, uh, that they're going to find a hard time uh, believing any of it. Mm -hmm. But I saw documents that were uh, labeled uh, under the classification top secret and uh, the compartmentalized, uh, or the compartment that that was put into it was called MAGIC, M-A-J-I-C, mm -hmm. um, which told me that, uh, that UFOs are real, which I already knew. I'd seen one. Right. Uh, but this went farther than that. It told me that they were extraterrestrial in origin, that there were four different extraterrestrial uh, species or races visiting this earth, uh, and that they had actually entered into an agreement with the United States government with one of these uh, species um, of alien beings to exchange technology, and it told me all the projects that, that uh, was underneath this. Uh, uh, Project Red Light was actually the testing of extraterrestrial craft. Um, uh, project Plato was a diplomatic project. Uh, Pounce was the recovery of technology. Uh, Pluto was the, uh, the application of that technology to our own secret space program, not the public space program. There are two different space programs. One is the, what the public gets to see, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, overseen by NASA. And the other one is a secret space program that nobody gets to see, which is really overseen by um, the, the Navy Department uh, under, under specialized, uh, uh, compartmentalized black projects. I also saw uh, documents under an operation called Operation Majority, which uh, outlined the plans to bring together a one world government. It also included extraterrestrial information within that. Um, uh, Project Grudge which was um, the second project. First was Sign and then Project Grudge, which contained all of the extraterrestrial information up to a certain point. I forget the year cutoff. And then it was contained after that in another project uh, called Project Aquarius, which was the accumulation of the whole history of alien inter interaction on, on planet Earth. Um, but I have to say at this point that I don't know if those documents were really telling the truth or not. They could have been showing me these things so that eventually I would go out and talk about this. And uh, maybe that will become clear to you later why they may have done that. Um, it could be real. So. Bill, at this time, was acquiring a reputation as a UFO specialist. Unlike others in the movement at that time, Bill's credibility was unique because of his experience in naval intelligence. In the late 1990s, however, Bill reconsidered much of what he was saying as his research led him to believe the technology he and others were witnessing may have been the creation of our own government created and tested in areas such as the infamous Groom Lake Area 51 in Nevada where Bill filmed his documentary Project Red Light. Bill was actually the first one to go to Area 51 and start filming some of these UFOs or alien spacecraft, whatever they may have been. Bill always maintained that it was a military base, which it is. We all know that now. In the early days, the uh, U.S. military refused to even acknowledge it existed until Bill Cooper got 
an aerial, a satellite photograph from the Russians, which proved it existed. We could see the uh, landing strips, all this kind of stuff, and clearly there were there was some sort of infrastructure there. There were buildings and something was happening. So Bill decided, and for a number of years, was taking expeditions up to Area 51, and he would take people there, and maybe one night they wouldn't see anything at all, but most nights uh, there was some UFO activity. Doyle Shamley, a Gulf War veteran and Army reservist, had paralleled Bill's quest for answers. The two met at a research conference Doyle had been arranging, and soon the two became tight research allies. Doyle would eventually leave the reserve and join Bill in Arizona to conduct full-time research up until Bill's death. Then he, he realized his research at the time was heavily with uh, Lars Hansen and many of them in the UFO realm. And he realized that most of them, and a lot of them upon admittal, and I have the documents, admitted to being working for either in the past or still being on CIA payroll. And he exposed them heavily. <laughs> speaking gave engagements and accused them of falsifying uh, facts, as they called them, to steer people away from an eventual finding out of all the facts and send them down all these wild goose chases. In all the history of the world, folks, if we were really being visited by extraterrestrial life, don't you think we would have found one by now? Don't you think so? And how come the government always gets there first? It's podunk time. It's in the middle of nowhere. There's a farmer milking his cow, a flying saucer crashes, and the government gets there before he can get from his cow to the crash site. <coughs> it's ridiculous. And I shudder to think that in the beginning, when I first came public, I may have been misleading somebody along those lines that, that this whole thing is being brought about by extraterrestrials. I think some of us were really used in the service of our country. I'm very angry about that. He then realized that the scope of it was not going to be handled by just searching the paranormal. We had to get more into our worldly realm right here, right now, the politics, the economics. And that's when he shifted more towards government type studies. In the history of the world there had never been a people who were truly free or who truly ruled themselves until the United States of America was created as a republic by which we ruled ourselves through elected representatives whom we sent to the state house either in the states or, or to Congress um, to do it. They also gave us every tool by which we would destroy ourselves if we weren't capable of doing it. The United States and France, the revolution in this country and the revolution in France, were created to bring about governments which would function as the antithesis to the kings and queens of the world and cause them to topple off their thrones. It also gave man a chance to prove once and for all whether he could rule himself or not. And if he could, fine, that would be the new world order. If he couldn't, they built the tools into the Constitution to allow them to take it away from us. And those tools are the creation of the federal democracy within the boundaries of Washington, D.C., and the right to contract, through which, if we were irresponsible, we would contract to receive rights from that federal democracy and thus, in return, give up our freedom. And that's exactly what's happening. After lecturing, releasing documents, and doing talk radio for a number of years, Bill had finally synthesized his research, life experiences, and philosophical insights into what would become one of the most popular underground conspiracy books of all time. Behold a pale horse. <laughs> 